Thrak the Deviler strove through the carnage of the caravan that his Brayherd had just trampled and slaughtered. These humans had put up a good fight, but they and their ordered machines stood in no chance against him and his kind's ferocity. Search for survivors. Their blood will feed the hearthstone this night. Grunts and roars of approval and affirmation come, f come frothing from the herd. Soon after, Thrak heard a click and had turned to see a bloody human thing pointing what they called a gun at him. Taste fire, scum. Instincts kick in, and Thrak barely dodges the shot. He's now far from him, so he moves in and swings down with his axe. As I life begins to ebbs from the man-thing, Thrak relishes in the bloodshed. Your sacrifice to chaos shall be bountiful. As he rips the axe free and lets the body slump to the ground, Loot the supplies, scour the bodies, we move soon. Chaos and destruction to all the ordered things in the mortal realms, and we must bring it to all corners of them. Another successful raid, having lost countless of his own kind many moons in a row. But he must not stop, for he, we are the true children of chaos, and we will claim what is ours. Welcome Warlords and Generals to today's Age of Sigmar video and today we will be discussing the herds and species that make up them and the great phrase if the beasts of chaos. Now the species breakdown of what type of herd they um, quotations organize into and eventually great phrase they join which we will cover in the next episode for Beast Men Lore. This will not be uh, one of each unit, more of a base understanding of the loose formation and organization that the Beasts of Chaos use, starting with the most numerous and basic among them, the Gores. Gathering in small herds to make a larger one, Gores and Ungores often make up Bray herds when they are the most numerous, spe speaking seas of brain and tight-knit herds. By dominance of savagery and cunning are these herds held together. Usually, Bray herds will remain hidden in the dark regions of the mortal realms, feasting and venting their rage and savagery upon local animals they hunt, explorers, and lost soldiers. But eventually, the herds will descend upon villages, caravans, barracks, towns, and even fortresses if they have the numbers and the ferocity. The species that make up the Bray herds are Gores, Ungores, and Centigores, but one would not think they are the same species by looking at them. So varied are they. Most Gores have sheep, goat, or ram heads, but they are not limited to them, as deep sea Gores have been discovered and sighted with scales, fins, and amphibious gills like fish. Some have piranha heads, shark heads, or even in some cases, turtle-like heads. As we mentioned in the previous video, that the realms of the origin affect their physiology and appearance, I'll be breezing over that. Centigores tend to be the most horse-like in aspect, though they can also have the appearance of stags, donkeys, and even other types of deer and four-legged uh, horse-like creatures. When the herd charges into battle, Gores and Ungores make up the bulk of the army, while Centigores and Tuscor chariots flank the army in the center is the leader of the army, the Beast Lord. These beastmen have the largest horns, thickest manes, and have scars of multiple battles. They lead by example by leading at the front, unleashing true bloodshed and ferocity to invigorate their fellow beasts. The beasts follow the hierarchical system, where the stronger and more violent you are, the higher up you will climb, with only exception being the Great Bray Shaman. The Beast Lord is the top dog of this pyramid, proving leadership through savagery and cunning, for his foes come from within and without, felling would-be usurpers as quickly as enemy champions. And if he cannot provide food and violence, the herd will murder him and make the next beast their leader. As for their way of war, a headlong charge is not their main tactic, however, and any commander who underestimates their cunning will soon pay dearly for it. 
As the main force charges, horns will sound, and many members of the herd will leap from ambush, hitting enemy and weak points, unprotected missile units, and from behind their lines, causing a scissor attack to form, breaking the back of the most foes as it catches them completely off guard. Usually, it takes a veteran-type leader or the most experienced combative to outmaneuver this type of tactic. As such, the Bray Herd's tactical objective is to hit hard and surround their foes and cut them off from any escape. After battles, it is the Great Bray Shaman, the most powerful among the Beast Lord's followers, who will commence a ritual of blood, bone, meat, and even the sacrifice of live enemies to the Hearthstones. The markers that are the monolithic and as well as the only markers they use for land markings. However, these beasts also use them to spread corruption even further. In battle, it will be hardness of the winds of chaos to empower their fellow beastmen, or bring devastation and mutation to his foes. The ritual it performs will give the shaman prophetic visions and signs. They tell the shaman where the beast lord must head next so they must constantly bring ruin and slaughter to other armies, in particular order for their most hated of foes, and wish nothing but to bring them ruin and destruction. And that is a short covering and summary of the Bray Herds, the cunning yet ruthless and brutal faction within the Beast of Chaos that covers most of the Gores and Centigores. Next we will be covering the herd that is made up of Fulgores, Cygores, Gorgons, and are usually led by a Doom Bull. These are the War Herds. Being made up of mostly Bulgores, Beastmen more like beasts in body and mind than their core cousins. Being more mutated, they are taller and have engorged muscles being tall as an armored knight and weighing just as much, if not more. These beastmen are possessed of a blood screed significantly greater than any other of the beastmen, falling upon each other for fresh raw meat if none is available to them if they go long enough without feasting on fallen enemies in combat. Some scholars believe the warherds came about due to gores, doing too many cannibalistic rituals causing them to mutate and be cursed with an unsatiable thirst for blood and meat. The Warherds are led by a Doom Bull, bigger, stronger, and more armored versions of a Bulgore. His savagery and his strengths are how he leads, seeking the most formidable enemies to display both of these features from the front. The Warherds take on war in a less cunning and more brutal fashion than their Gore Brayherd cousins, tactically at least. Roar herds will charge into the strongest point in the enemy lines, slaughter their way through the rest, running down any who attempt to run from them. Bulgors will shatter the line with their doom bull leading them, being supported by gorgons scything opponents with bladed limbs and cygors tossing boulders, stopping foes and seeking out the spellcasters to devour and unintentionally remove magical support from the enemy army. The, heads, the herdstones of these war herds are fed so much flesh that they often form, they turn from stone into bulging muscles with pumping blood veins, networking all over it like a spider's web. The gods of chaos take particular interest in the war herds as their endless rampages draw the eye of the gods. Corn for constant blood being spilled. Zinch sees these each malformed corpse as an effigy to mutation. Slanesh revels in the excess of violence they bring, and Nurgle for the rotted bodies they leave, festering with rot. The warherds could care less. They slaughter for the sheer pleasure and ability to feed, not for the adoration of weak and disillusioned gods. Now with the violent, blood-greedy warherds covered, we'll be moving on to our next herd subject, the ancient and chaotic bound Thunderscorn Beast Herds. These next herds are by far the most ancient and feared of the herds ever, and the smallest are the size of the hills from the most wild and desolate areas of the realms. When they descend upon civilizations, it is with the force of a hurricane. These are the Thunderscorn Beast Herds. 
The creatures that make up these herds are dragon ogres, massive creatures with incredible strength, lightning crackling across their skin. Though they do not ride to war often, but when they do, they bring ruin and destruction wherever they rampage, through forests, though the fewest of number of the herds. However, a handful of dragon ogres can slaughter entire armies and bring ruin to entire continents and nations. The center of the Eye of the Storm of this herd, both literally and figuratively, are Dragon Ogre Shagoths, immeasurably ancient and powerful even compared to a normal Dragon Ogre, and the way larger and usually being the size of mountains. It is theorized the Shagoths were created with the realms, being given form by the primordial storms of those chaotic days, though the truth is quite different. In the world that was, an incredibly powerful, the most powerful Shagath of his kind, the size of three mountain ranges, somehow survived the old world's death. This Shagath has made his way into Azir, the realm of heavens, and began to spawn more dragon ogres, and cla they claimed their own territories. This creature survived simply due to an ancient pact, for the dragon ogres sold their whole race to the servitude of the chaos, gods in exchange for power and immortality. From this pact is eternal, having survived into the mortal realms from the world that was. Meaning if you if not active often, the Thunderscorn are forever chained to the will of the Dark Gods. When Sigmar descended to claim Azir as his base of operations, he had to clear out the dragon ogres in order to fulfill and fully establish his domain. As mighty as they are, the dragon ogres were driven out from the realm of heavens. Afterwards, they spread through the realms and waited for their chance to invade and reclaim Azir, even issuing challenges to Sigmar himself, though they go unanswered. Many centuries have they have waited, and when the chaos gods came forth, so did the dragon ogres. These beasts destroyed many armies during the Age of Chaos, until the storm cast came heralding the Age of Sigmar. Here the dragon ogres vented their ancient hatred of Sigmar upon them. Now the dragon ogres rest and wait through the most desolate areas of the realms, their hearthstones gaining magnetic features, turning into metal and crackling of arcing lightning, acting as monolithic lightning rods. At the center of these domains is the largest of the hearthstones, a gigantic boulder of magnetic metal. Soaked with warp powers, this is where the Thunderscorn gather before bringing destruction to the realms and bringing the storm with them. Powerful, ancient, and not seen often, those are the icons of the Thunderscorn. Now, those are all the herds covered. This last subject is more kind of just the loose spectrum that the rest of the army falls into, which would be the Monsters of Chaos. Among the many species and herds of the Beasts of Chaos, there are beasts and monsters that are simply beasts twisted by the warping powers of Chaos being naturally created, but being outside the natural cycle of nature itself. Creatures such as Warhounds and Tuscores gather in hunting packs and take down larger prey to ravenously feast upon. Other monsters are giant, solitary predators, stalking the land for a fresh kill. Although not part of the Grave Fray, but they are attracted to and drawn to them upon they that are on the rampage. Hearing the sounds of battle and smell of blood on the wind draws the monsters, Chaos Gardens, Gargants striding forth to crush the enemies, and beasts such as chimeras, jabber slifes, cockatrice spring forth from lairs to engage and devour the victims of the battlefield, living or dead. These monsters have an innate instinct that let them fight alongside their beastmen kin, though some of them are larger monsters occasionally will eat some of the lesser beasts and beastmen of the herds. The monsters will also, on the occasion, go on to separate rampages without beastmen great phrase. Giant beasts leading the rest of the directionless hunt away from the herds, hunting randomly and destroying anything in their path. The Beastmen Herdstones also attract these monsters, regardless on if the Great Freys are gathered around them or if they are long abandoned by the Beastmen. On the latter, beasts will make their lairs by older, abandoned herdstones, being attracted by the warping powers it exudes. 
often feeding on explorers or locals brave enough to try to approach the stone and destroy the herd stone to put at halt to the corrupting influence of the local area. Regardless if it is these beacons of chaotic corruption or that attracts them or the rampages, the monsters of chaos will always lure in, lurk in the shadows of the realm to spring upon those ordered when the beastmen go on rampages. And now with the monsters covered, we have reached the end of the video. Next we will be covering the great phrase and the god specific phrase. I'd hope to get them all in one video, but it would have made the video a little too long for what I like. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you want to see more from me, please subscribe as I am trying to grow this channel into something more. And I want to start branching out into doing things more than just... Uh, narrative and lore based videos and I would like some comments and opinions on what I should do. I upload a video or try to every one to two weeks. I've been slacking lately since I've been working two jobs but I'm gonna keep trying to get videos up. If you have any criticism please leave a comment. Hope you all have a lovely day and happy wargaming.